Continuing with the study of the electric field, now we are going to focus on how to calculate that electric field when what I have in space are continuous systems of charge. Previously, we had seen how I applied the principle of superposition in the case that I wanted to calculate the electric field and I had a finite number of charges. Now I'm going to have to introduce a new element, the element that we're going to call the charge differential element. And we are going to apply it to different distributions of charged bodies, to a longitudinal distribution, a surface distribution, and a volumetric distribution of charge. We are going to analyze these different cases. In analyzing previously a discrete system, we had seen that to calculate the electric field at a given point, what we did was to add vectorially the contributions of each of the charged particles. I have here the general algebraic expression and in the particular case developed here. Now we are going to take as an example these drawings that we have here, a longitudinal distribution, a surface distribution, or a volumetric distribution. What is going to happen in these cases? Well, in these cases, I am not going to have to calculate the electric field, simply a point charge and a distance from that charge to the point of study? No. In this case, I have to take into account that I will have to add up all the contributions of all the little pieces of my body that is charged. And therefore, I am going to cut it into small pieces and establish differentials of length for the longitudinal distribution, differentials of surface area for the superficial distribution, and differentials of volume for the volumetric distribution. I am going to work, in this case also, with charge densities, and these densities will depend on the dimensions occupied by the charge in the bodies. In this case, I would have, in the first one, what would be lambda, which is the expression that I am going to obtain, that I am going to use for the longitudinal charge density, differential charge, differential split, differential of length, that would correspond to the small piece of charge, to the small piece of charge that is inside this small piece of my charge distribution. In the case of the surface distribution, I'm going to work with sigma, which is going to be the surface charge density, split charge differential, the surface differential that I'm going to take. And for the volumetric distribution with RHO, RAO is going to be the one that designates the volumetric density of charge differential charge divided by the volume differential, this little cube that I am taking for the volumetric distribution. We are going to go through each of these distributions to see how to work and finally arrive at a clear expression for the electric field. If I have my longitudinal distribution starting with what would be the simplest of them, that is, for a single dimension, what I will do is to divide it into small pieces. If I have a longitudinal distribution, the only possibility to chop it up is to cut it up and I will have length differentials. Each one of those length differentials is going to have a charge differential associated with it and at a given point each charge differential will contribute a field differential. How am I going to calculate that field differential at that study point? Well, for a charge we know that this field is given by this expression, so now what is going to happen is that instead of a charge, I am going to have a charge differential. What expression will we use then? This one here. And each charge differential will contribute a field differential. All right, so if I want to calculate the entire field that's generating the entire longitudinal distribution, what am I going to have to do at this point? Integrate all my expression to cover the entire length where I have the charge distributed. And to be able to perform the integral, I will have to establish the relationship between that charge and the dimensions it occupies. A very easy way in this case is to take advantage of the concept of linear density of charge and then express that integral as a function of that longitudinal density of charge by the length differential. With this, we can calculate it. Let's see a very simple example that I think will help us to know how to work in these cases. Let's take a look. We consider in this case a charged loop with a positive longitudinal charge density. Let's consider. As long as it is the reddish configuration, remember that we said that it is referred to positive charges. And I have a density of split coulomb per meter of charge. If I want to know the field that this loop is generating at its center, which would also be if I place a Cartesian coordinate reference system centered at that center, at the origin of the reference system as well, it turns out that I will be analyzing, as I said before, each one of the length differentials, its contribution to the center. How are we going to do that? I have the length differential, it will have a charge differential, and it contributes to the total field with this field differential. If I make a view from above to see all the fields that are going to come out, look, we have the analysis of this length differential, and if I take symmetrically the upper part for my reference system, this charge differential also exactly the same as the previous one, and located exactly in the positive coordinates and with respect to the same negative coordinates and before, what will happen? Well, 
Before I had the electric field with this orientation and now I am going to have it with this one. What is the result of adding these two vectors? Well, the vertical contributions will be annulled and I will only have one contribution in the horizontal axis. What will happen if now instead of taking the charge differential as I have taken before? At the upper symmetrical point, I take it at the diametrically opposite point. Let's do the analysis. I had this charge differential here before, and if I pick it up at the diametrically opposite point, I'm left with the interaction being exactly the same as before. The modulus in direction but opposite direction. I will always, for any little bit of charge differential that I pick up, I'm going to be able to find a diametrically opposite charge differential. Then, if they are going to counteract each other two by two, what will happen in the end? is that they will always cancel each other out and therefore the result will be that the electric field at the origin in the center of the loop will be zero. How would we do it in the case of a surface charge distribution? Well, the first step is the same as before. To take small pieces of charge, small pieces. Before they were of length differentials. Now they will be of surface differentials. And here we have a little more freedom. That is to say, I can take surface differentials for example, with this geometry, or circles, or triangles, or for example, like this, as I wish. What will guide me to take the type of geometry of the surface differentials? Well, I will be guided by the geometry that allows me to solve more easily the integral that at the end I have to calculate. That is what will guide me. Well, starting from the same idea as before, if I have a surface distribution of charge, I have to know that I am going to have a density of that charge that is going to allow me to relate each little piece of surface to the charge it has. And starting from the same idea that I know how to calculate the field for a single charge, in this case, each surface differential will contribute to the point I want to study with an electric field differential. How will I calculate the electric field differential? As before, considering the charge differentials and the total field by integrating. In this case, I would have the integral extended to the whole surface where I have my charge. And depending on the surface charge density, the differential of S, the squared distance between the point of study and the differential of S that I am considering, and the unit vector that marks the direction. We move to a higher dimension, to three dimensions, and now what I have is a volumetric charge distribution. We repeat the same steps as before. The only thing I will talk about in this case is volumetric densities and volume differentials. Those are the key differences. But the steps are exactly the same, and when it comes to perform the integral, yes, I will have to extend it to the entire volume. But notice that it remains as before what would be the algebraic scheme, but with the corresponding magnitudes in this case. Therefore, summing up, what do I have to take into account if I want to analyze the field of continuous load distributions? Well, I start from the somewhat algebraic idea for a single charge and calculate the field differentials of each charge differential that is contributing to the field. And at the end, I have to take into account that in order to solve the resulting integral, I will have to consider the longitudinal surface or volumetric charge density. Thank you very much.